Welcome to the Arefco Service Group YouTube channel. Please remember to subscribe and ring that bell to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Take a look today at the sequence of operations of a furnace. All furnaces have the same sequence of operation. This basic sequence goes for all furnaces from your 80% single stage to a modulating unit. The only difference is the staging. But why does a gas furnace have a sequence of operation? Safety. If we didn't have to worry about safety, we could just fire that thing up and hope it ran well. We're working with natural gas, which in the right combination with air can be explosive. We also have to worry about carbon monoxide. So that's why there is a specific sequence of operation that a furnace goes through before it starts blowing warm air into the house. So let's go over that basic sequence of operation. The first is a call for heat from the thermostat. That starts all action. The draft inducer motor starts. Then draft is proven. The igniter turns on and that could be a hot surface igniter or a pilot the gas valve opens and the burners light. But then we have to prove that there's flame. The indoor blower turns on and we have a happy customer. So that's the basic sequence of operation. Let's go into a little more detail on this. All gas furnaces have a circuit board inside and they control several functions but the biggest function they control is the sequence of operation. But let's take a look at this circuit board real quick. Up here we have a set of dip switches and these primarily control the blower speed, its delay, uh, whether there's air conditioning, the continuous fan and airflow setup switches. Then we have our 24 volt thermostat terminals. We go from our R, our Y terminals, our W terminals, our G terminal and our C or common terminal. We have our 24 volt 3 amp fuse. Here we have our 24 volt connections for our transformer. We have our status lights, our 12 pin connector, our high voltage or 120 volt neutral bus, the hot bus, and then we have a 4 pin connector that connects our draft inducer fan and our hot surface igniter. So that's the basic parts of this circuit board and these are pretty common to all circuit boards. So let me move over here and we can get started. We're going to start by bringing electricity into this board. So we're going to wire in our 120 volt AC power but now we need low voltage so let's put in a transformer and let's wire up the primary side of it. And now we're going to wire in the secondary side and it's going to go to our 24 volt transformer connections. The coloring I'm using for the wiring in this demonstration does not represent the actual colors you're going to see. I'm only doing it for clarification. Now we're going to need a thermostat. So let's wire that in. We're going to wire in our R terminal and our C terminal and those provide power for the clock and calendar functions and programming functions within the thermostat. The first in our sequence is a call for heat. What can we do to help this young lady? So let's walk over here to our thermostat and adjust the heat up. There we go, we got it up to 73 degrees. And let's go back to our board now. So we have a call for heat. Let's run a wire from the thermostat to W1. When W1 is called, that is a call for heat, and that starts the entire sequence. Now I'm going to move over here so I'm a little bit more out of the way. Our draft inducer motor starts. Here's our draft inducer, and let's wire that thing up. And now it starts. The next step in the sequence is draft must be proven. Now this is very important because we don't want to produce carbon monoxide. And in order to do that, we need to provide enough air. So a three ton furnace produces 36,000 BTUs of heat per hour. One cubic foot of natural gas contains approximately 1,000 BTUs. It takes 15 cubic feet of air 
to completely burn that one cubic foot of gas. So we need 36 cubic feet of gas to produce 36,000 BTUs. We're going to multiply 36 times 15, well, that's 36 cubic feet of gas times 15 cubic feet of air, and that equals 540 cubic feet of air that that draft inducer fan has to blow through that furnace every hour to completely burn the natural gas. To give you an idea of how much air that is, I'm six feet tall. So let's build a box six feet by six feet. It needs to be 15 feet deep. That's how much air has to be blown through that furnace every hour to completely burn that 36 cubic feet of natural gas. That's a lot of air. That fan works hard. And we need to make sure that that fan is blowing that much air through the furnace. We do that with a pressure switch. Here's what a pressure switch looks like. Here's our pressure switch and let's wire that thing up. When there is enough air flowing through the furnace that we know will have complete combustion, that pressure switch closes. That tells the circuit board it's time to go on to the next step in the sequence. And that is our igniter is going to start. So let's put an igniter in up here. This is a hot surface igniter and we'll wire it up as well. When the next step starts, it's going to glow bright red. Once the circuit board knows that it's hot, it's going to open the gas valve and the burners are going to light. So let's put a gas valve in here and we're going to put a burner up here. Now let's wire this thing in. And when the gas valve opens, we get flame. Next, we use a flame rectifier to prove that there's flame. And the reason we want to know that there's flame is if for some reason the flame goes out and the gas valve does not shut off it's going to fill that furnace and the flue pipe with natural gas, which can cause an explosive situation. Now, flame will also produce a small amount of electricity. When it hits the flame rectifier, it produces approximately five to 10 milliamps of electricity, not a lot, but that sends a signal back to the circuit board that we have flame. Now we'll go to the next step in our sequence of operation. And that is our indoor blower is going to start. So let's put an indoor blower in. We're going to wire it up and it starts blowing hot air into the house. With all of that, we now have a happy customer. That is our basic sequence of operations for a furnace. So let's quickly review. We have power to our circuit board and there's a call for heat. Our draft inducer fan starts. Draft is proven. The igniter starts. The gas valve opens and we have flame. Flame is proven. Our indoor blower starts. And we end up with a happy customer.